Hi everybody, welcome back to the Eastfield Gunroom YouTube channel. We are here once again at the fabulous Oakhead shooting ground, 75 acres of glorious countryside on the borders of Cannock Chase. And something a bit different today, we've got a head-to-head -head between two of arguably the most popular guns here in the UK, particularly if people starting off clay shooting. We're going to look at the Brett Silver Pigeon 1 and the Browning 525, go through a few details. But most importantly, we're going to put them through the paces and see which comes out top. So here we are on the first stand. It's a sporting layout here at Oak Edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my protective stuff on, my ear defenders, I've got my hat on, got my glasses, and we're going to shoot each gun simultaneously. Hugely, hugely popular Silver Pigeon 1. We'll have a go with that. Then we'll have a go with the 525. I apologise in advance for my shooting. Don't do a lot of shooting, but uh, meh, what's the worst that can happen? I've still got it. So onto the Browning, 525 Sporter 1, 30 inch Sporter. What I'm trying to do with these two guns is I've got two guns that are completely unaltered straight off the shelf, so I can make an, a, uh, a direct comparison between the two. So I've had about 10 shots with each of the guns, the 525 Sporter 1, the Silver Pigeon 1. What is noticeable is, in my opinion, is the 525 is considered to be more kicky. There's more recoil from it. It is a lighter gun. I think it's about four ounces lighter, but it seems to make a massive, massive difference. And it's just not quite as, you know, not difficult clays, but it's not quite as steady as a Silver Pigeon one. And I think that's down to the extra bit of weight. So uh, let's go and shoot some more. So we're going to start with the Bretta on this stand again. Whoa! So a few more shots with the Silver Pigeon 1. Feels nice, feels steady. You know, you don't have to fight the gun to get it going. With it being an Italian gun, tends to have a little bit more cast than something like the Brownie, which we'll shoot in a minute. And that can make a big difference to the shooter. I'm not particularly broad. I don't need a lot of cast. Having said that, I've shot that quite well. I'm quite happy to move on to the Brownie. So a few more shots with the Browning and the way they feel is noticeably different. The Beretta to me, I think the extra bit of cast and the extra bit of weight, it just makes it easier to swing. This is a bit whippy. You know, I've shot a lot with an MK38, which although it's made in the same factory as the Browning, is a very, very different gun because it's heavier, it's steadier. I think this personally at seven and a half pound is a bit light for close shooting for sporting in particular. Um, so based on that, I would say that I've, I've, I feel more at home with the Beretta. But, you know, let's not completely discount the Browning. Let's go and shoot a few more stands and then we'll have a real in-depth look at the difference between the two guns. So we're just going to shoot this last stand with both guns, the 525 Sporter 1, the Silver Pigeon 1. Uh, got a nice little rabbit and a uh, going away parrot, apparently. So let's hope we don't get accosted by Long John Silver. And then we'll go back and we'll have a chat about both the guns. I'll tell you my experience of shooting them. And, you know, I can make recommendations depending on the type of shooter of which gun might most be best suitable for you. Now that was really interesting because I found on the other stands of Browning was a little bit too whippy. So I would have thought on something like a rabbit, I wouldn't be able to slow it down. I've just marmalized those rabbits into rabbit soup. So let's try the Beretta. So last few shots with the Silver Pigeon 1. Interestingly, I didn't shoot it as well as did the Brownie on the rabbit standing with the left to right. And I think that comes to down to the fact that the Brownie is a little bit lighter, a little bit faster in the barrels. Quite a tricky clay that left to right. Parrot, I think it's called. So what we'll do now, we'll go and find a quiet spot and we'll just evaluate what I've found with the two guns, uh, the differences, etc. Talk about a specification. So let's go. So that's it, we've been out, we've shot both the guns, we've shot the Beretta, so we're pitching one, we've shot the Browning 525 Sport to one. So now I wanna just go through my conclusion, talk about my experience of shooting these two guns and why I think they might be more suitable for one type of shooter than another and look at the differences in specification. We'll start with the Browning. I'm a huge fan of Brownings. I love the deep body, I love the, the feel, the solidness when you pick it up, when you close the gun but I actually struggled a little bit with this gun because I just found it too light. You know, at seven pound, eight ounces for a sporting gun, 
I just think it's too light. I think it's more of an all-rounder. If you want to shoot some game as well as some clays, then this would definitely be a consideration. This is the latest specification 525 Sport 1 in terms of the engraving, the barrel profile and the stock dimensions. So I'll run through that from top to bottom. So barrels, we have got 30 inch um, backboard in Vector Plus choke. So they're bored at 18.7. So they're overboard. It's ventilated rib, ventilated barrels. 10 mil um, rib with a tram line. This particular gun hasn't got a center bead on it because I think it's a few years old. The brand, brand new ones have got center beads on it. Uh, engraving, it's kind of a brush finish action with, you know, almost like a Celtic kind of um, scroll work. Very, very nice to be fair. You know, exactly what you would kind of expect from the price point. Non-adjustable trigger. Now the latest, latest one has got an adjustable trigger. Like I said, this is a few years old, but other than that, it is exactly the same as the current model. Three inch chambers, high performance steel shot proof, as you would expect. But the big difference really is, like I said, is the weight. Now it just feels a bit too whippy for me. Having said that, if you like a gun that's very, very light, very fast, then you might find this, you know, a real, real godsend because on close, short, fast stuff, it's great because you can get the gun moving really, really quickly. The only danger of that, of course, is then you've got to slow it down for the for the longer stuff. Now, stock dimensions, 36, 56, so 36 mil drop at comb, 56 mil drop at heel. But one of the critical things I want to talk about is the cast. It is a very, very straight gun, neutral cast. You know, a right or a left-handed shooter could use one of these comfortably. But if you're a bigger guy, you're quite broad, it's not going to be ideal for you because you are going to want a bit more cast to get that particular um, mount in the pocket where it where it should be. As it's light, it does kick a bit. I am very susceptible to recoil. I hate recoil. I like shooting heavy guns with light cartridges. Now this, um, with standard sort of 28 gram stuff, it was kicky. And I think it's down to the fact mainly because it's that reduced weight. Yes, it's got this Inflex 2 recoil pad on the back, but it is awful. You know, I think from my point of view, if you're going to buy one of these, the first thing you should do is get a decent recoil pad put on the back and potentially maybe a little bit of weight. So this one at £7.8 ounces is a bit barrel heavy. So what we want to do is we want to stick probably five or six ounces in the back end, put a decent recoil pad on it. And to be fair, it will completely transform the gun. That's just my opinion. So moving on to the Beretta. Okay, first of all, we'll talk about the difference in the weight. It's four or five ounces heavier, and that makes a huge difference. It just feels steadier when you're shooting it. You know, the majority of sporting clay presentations, you need a gun that's, that's steady. I could argue for me, it's probably still too light. I like a heavier gun, but you know, it's knocking out, it's sort of 7, 12, 7, 13. It's getting towards that kind of eight pound mark, which is what I think it really should be different style of action it's a lower profile action the balance is certainly very different to the browning so if we put that there that is more of a, it's maybe slightly yeah if anything slightly barrel heavy but not as much as the browning now this one 30 inch barrels ventilated barrels ventilated rib 10 by 8 sporting rib three inch chambers, uh, steel shot proof, high performance steel shot proof. Again, this is the latest specification silver pigeon one you can buy aside from the engraving. I think they changed the engraving two or three years ago, maybe a little bit longer ago than that. Um, but other than that, it's a 680 series action. It will always go bang. It will never let you down because ultimately both these guns in all fairness are very, very good. Um, in terms of the Bretta stock dimensions, it's a tiny bit higher, which for me, I like, it's 35.55, and I think in the UK, that's probably a better stock dimension. We're only talking about a millimeter of difference, but we're also looking at the cast and the thickness of the comb. And I think for most, most guys or most shooters in the UK, I would think the Beretta off the shelf will be a slightly better fit. And don't get me wrong, that surprises me because as a huge fan of Japanese shotguns, I just found this a much better shooting experience is all, all I can say. Uh, particularly the recoil pad, much more effective than the Inflex waffle on the back of this one. But it is what it is. And this is why, you know, when we look at these two models, two of the biggest sellers here in the UK, I've no doubt it's the same worldwide. And a lot of the time it boils down to where you learn to shoot. If you go to a shooting ground and they've got a load of silver pigeons, the chances are you will end up buying a silver pigeon. You know, on the other side of the coin, if you go to a shooting ground and they're very pro-browning, the chances are you will buy a browning. My advice to you would be 
you know, they're a very similar price point. They will last equally as long. It's a different manufacture process with the Beretta over the Browning, but they're both very, very good, very proven designs. Um, my advice to you would be if you want to get into the sport and you're looking at one of these guns, which a lot of people are, you've got to go out and try them because like I said, from my point of view, I would have expected the 525 to shoot very much like an MK38. It didn't. It was lighter, it was faster, it wasn't as steady, and ultimately, because of that, it, it recalled more, which I don't like. I hope you find this review, comparison, head-to-head -head interesting. I certainly enjoyed doing it, uh, and eye-opening in, in many ways. If you've got any questions at all about these two guns, specifications, etc., please do um, get in touch, comment below, send us an email, go through the website. From me, Matthew Morgan at Eastfield Gunroom, don't forget to keep liking and subscribing the channel because we cannot bring content like this without you guys and without finding something that you want to see. Big thanks to the guys at Oakhead Shooting Ground once more. Fantastic facility. If you haven't been and you are local, you must go. That's it from me. Brett Silver Pigeon 1, 525 Sporter 1. You decide. See you soon.